Alright, so we have finished with testis, vasa efferentia, epidermis, vasa differentia, and the ejaculatory ducts. Now we have the three glands seminal vessels, prostate gland, and tauber gland. The seminal vesicles are a pair of glands situated below the urinary bladder, one on either side of the urethra. Each seminal vesicle is a lobulated gland. It is full of lobules. And these lobules keep on secreting a yellowish fluid viscous, thick in nature and that off-white colored, yellowish, thick and viscous fluid is called as seminal fluid and this seminal fluid forms around 60% of semen so semen is made up of seminal fluid, prostatic fluid, tauber gland fluid the main bulk of semen, 60% is seminal fluid. This seminal fluid is rich in chemicals. Seminal fluid is rich in fructose, a sugar. It has in it citric acid. It has in it an enzyme called as prostaglandins and it has a protein in it called as fibrinogen so seminal fluid is rich in fructose, citric acid, prostaglandins and fibrinogen fructose acts as a source of energy for the sperms. Sperms, we remember, have become motile by passing through epididymis. But they were carried by peristalsis in the vasa differentia. So if they are already motile, why are they carried by peristalsis? Because sperms are motile but there is no energy, no nourishment for the sperms. But once the sperm enter from the vas difference into the ejaculatory duct, the seminal fluid is now released in the ejaculatory duct. So sperms and seminal fluid mix with each other and this seminal fluid is rich in fructose. Using the fructose, the sperms will actually start moving so fructose will act as a source of energy for the tail movements of the sperms. Along with fructose, there is citric acid. Citric acid acts on the sperms and sperms have in their body a mitochondria. Citric acid stimulates the mitochondria of the sperm and now after stimulation, mitochondria start converting fructose into ATP, adenosine triphosphate and ATPs are then used by the tail for doing their zigzag movements. So who stimulates the mitochondria? Citric acid. What will mitochondria do? Utilize the fructose and convert the fructose into ATPs and these ATPs are used by the tail for doing their zigzag locomotion. And seminal fluid has in it prostaglandines. Prostaglandines release along with seminal fluid passes through the urethra, enters into the penis and is ejaculated out in the vagina once the semen enters the vagina prostaglandines go into the vagina and cause slow contraction of the vagina along with it it enters the 
uterus and cause a slow contraction of the uterus and then sudden relaxation sudden relaxation and that will help the sperms to get sucked into the fallopian tube a phenomenon called as reverse peristalsis takes place now to understand what i just said suppose we use a small example aap samjho ek rickshaw mein baithe ho aur rickshaw wala continuously bhopu baja raha hai uska so you get very fascinated by that bhopu and you bring it home so there is a small trumpet there is a rubber ball above and in the rubber ball we make two holes on either side and we put a straw on either side so we have trumpet we have rubber ball and we have straw now if i slowly contract the rubber ball and i keep my hand on the side of the straw and now i release the rubber ball as i release the rubber ball the air pressure inside the rubber ball will become negative and air will get sucked through the trumpet into the rubber ball and through the straw i will feel it on my hand to main aise dabaunga rubber ball ko chhod dunga to mere haath pe hawa aaye sir what are the straws fallopian tube what is the rubber ball uterus what is the trumpet vagina and what is release in the vagina semen which has in it prostaglandins what will prostaglandins do cause slow contraction of the vagina and a slow contraction of the uterus and then sudden relaxation what will that sudden relaxation help in creating a suction movement and a suction may take place and sperms will beautifully get sucked from the vagina into the uterus into the fallopian tube and if an egg and sperm now come in contact with each other in the fallopian tube fertilization takes place what is this beautiful phenomenon called as reverse peristalsis takes place so prostaglandin helps in the process of reverse peristalsis and help in increasing chances of sperm meeting the egg which is called as fertilization successfully taking place and seminal fluid is rich in fibrinogen fibrinogen will help in coagulation or clotting of semen when ejaculation takes place fibrinogen will go out with the semen and fibrinogen will form a meshwork so something like a net or net ke andar squares hote hain uske andar sperm entangle ho jate hain and that is a wire mesh so if you have heard of it even if we get an injury to our hand little blood will come out and in the blood is present the protein called as fibrinogen fibrinogen comes out and on coming in contact with air fibrinogen gets converted into fibrin and fibrin ki thread longitudinally attach hoti hai लैटिट्यूडली अटैच होती है और उनके बीच में एक वायर मैश बन जाता है एंड इन द वायर मैश प्लेटलेट्स गेट एंटैंगल्ड एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ ब्लैड क्लॉट सो लाइक क्लॉटिंग यूजेस फाइब्रिनोजन ऑफ क्लॉटिंग ऑफ ब्लड यूजेस फाइब्रिनोजन व्हेन इजैक्युलेशन टेक्स प्लेस क्लॉटिंग और कोएगुलेशन ऑफ सीमेन also is done by fibrinogen in which sperms get entangled and what will that help it that will help it deep penetration of the semen into the vagina so a deep penetration hoga suppose i take a little water put in it salt and mix it and i use a certain force and i release the water the water will come out but after covering a small distance the water will 
fall down along with it the salt will fall down but some of the same water with salt i keep in the refrigerator and it becomes ice and now i take my hand and using the same force i release the ice the ice with salt will cover a greater distance because compared to liquid solids are more dense and will cover a great distance if the semen was fluid watery then on ejaculation the semen which was watery would have entered the vagina and would have immediately leaked out carrying the sperm with it but because of fibrinogen the semen is viscous thick dense solid and that is the reason on ejaculation semen covers a great distance and enters deep in the vagina carrying the sperm with it so seminal fluid has a it citric acid which stimulates the mitochondria it has fructose which acts as a source of energy for the tail movement it has prostate glandine which causes contraction and relaxation of the vagina and uterus helping in sperm to get sucked into the fallopian tube a phenomenon called as reverse peristalsis and fibrinogen gives viscosity or thickness to semen which penetrates deep in the vagina for a successful copulation to take place that seminal vesicles and then we have the prostate gland the prostate gland is a single gland seminal vesicles are pair cowper's gland are pair but prostate a single gland hota hai and the prostate gland is present below the urinary bladder surrounded by the urethra it surrounds the urethra prostate surrounds the urethra and on either side the prostate gland is cut through by the ejaculatory ducts the ejaculatory ducts penetrate the prostate gland and enter into the urethra so we have below the bladder the prostate gland penetrated on either side by ejaculatory duct the prostate gland is a whitish color gland and cone shape resembles like a cone it is one gland but actually made of around 15 to 20 small glands so prostate a single gland hai but uske andar 15 se 20 chote chote glands hote hain and these glands give out a milky white alkaline fluid called as prostatic fluid a milky white alkaline fluid called as prostatic fluid which forms 30% of the final fluid called as semen so 60% is seminal fluid 30% is prostatic fluid seminal fluid we remember is yellowish of white viscous in nature the prostatic fluid is milky white and alkaline in nature why do we require this prostatic fluid milky white alkaline sir when the urinary bladder contracts urine will enter into the urethra and urine will pass out along with urine are deposited in the urethra crystals of uric acid urine has a red uric acid or uric acid ke crystals urine mein hote urethra mein hote hain so urethra has crystals of uric acid similarly when the semen enters the vagina the vagina is full of lactic acid why does the vagina have lactic acid so the vagina is an open tube in which the penis enters during copulation 
But sir, if the penis is not there in a normal state, the vagina being an open tube, you have bacteria, viruses, fungi entering the vagina and infection can easily take place. So to prevent infection of the vagina, nature has beautifully protected it by supplying the vagina with a lot of lactic acid. In a very acidic lactic acid pH, the bacteria, fungi, viruses cannot survive and that will protect the vagina from infection. But so, sperms when they pass first in the urethra, they will come in contact with uric acid. When they go through the urethra into vagina, the sperms will come in contact with lactic acid. And sperms are very sensitive to acid. Any acidic pH and the sperms will instantly die when they come in contact with acid. And because we have uric acid in the urethra and lactic acid in the vagina, the semen has in it prostatic fluid. Prostatic fluid, we remember, is milky white and alkaline in nature. And the alkaline nature of the prostatic fluid neutralizes the uric acid in the urethra and the lactic acid in the vagina and protects the sperm from the acidic pH. So prostatic fluid, milky white alkaline, protects the sperm from acidic pH. And the prostatic fluid is rich in proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes namely a chemical called as fibrinolysine. Fibrinolysine is a proteolytic enzyme. So what do we mean by proteolytic? Lysis means to break. Proteo means protein. So proteolytic enzymes break down protein. So which protein? If you remember, seminal fluid has in it the protein called as fibrinogen. And fibrinogen had helped in forming the mesh of sperm, meshwork in which sperms were entangled. And on ejaculation, the semen is viscous and thick. 15 to 20 seconds after ejaculation, the same semen which was of white and yellowish and viscous will become watery, transparent and completely liquefied in nature because prostatic fluid has in it proteolytic enzyme called fibrinolysine which will light, which will break fibrinogen. So fibrinogen ko break kar dega and the semen will become watery and transparent. So whenever ejaculation takes place, on ejaculation the semen is yellowish tinged and viscous thick and 15 to 20 seconds later it becomes watery and transparent. That is because Fibrinolysine will break down fibrinogen. This is important. Sir, when ejaculation takes place, the semen is viscous and thick because of fibrinogen. And it will enter deep in the vagina. But sir, what if fibrinogen forms the mesh and sperms are entangled all the time? That means sperms will wire mesh se bahari ni aayenge. Then how will they go and move by their tail movement and reach the fallopian tube? So it is important that during ejaculation, for deep penetration, we need a wire mesh so sperms are entangled in fibrinogen and it is viscous and thick. But 15-20 seconds after ejaculation, 
beautifully the proteolytic enzyme fibrinolysine will break down fibrinogen and the semen will become watery and transparent so as the mesh breaks now the sperm can start moving by their zigzag movement and enter nicely into the fallopian tube and help in the process called that fertilization to successfully take place. So, prostatic fluid, milky white, alkaline, neutralizes the uric acid in the urethra and lactic acid in the vagina and protects the sperm from any acidic pH and Prostatic fluid has in it proteolytic enzyme fibrinolysine which will help it break down of fibrinogen. Fibrinogen makes the semen viscous and solid. Fibrinolysine will make it liquefied and watery. So sperms are free and they can start moving by their tail movement and enter the fallopian tube and fertilize the egg. And then we have Cowper's glands. Cowper's glands are also called as bulbo-urethral glands. They are bulb-like and they enter the urethra. So these are called as bulbo-urethral glands. The Cowper's glands are situated below the prostate gland. 5 cm below the prostate gland. And Cowper's gland are small P-shaped yellowish in color. Small P-shaped yellowish in color, they give out a sticky, transparent, mucus-like fluid which is called as the Cowper's gland fluid and Cowper's gland fluid forms the remaining 10% of the semen. So, what is semen made up of? 60% is seminal fluid, 30% is prostatic fluid, and 10% is Cowper's gland fluid. The seminal fluid was viscous, thick, and yellowish in color, or white in color. Prostatic fluid is milky white and alkaline in nature and Cowper's gland fluid is clear, transparent, sticky, mucus-like. And golden words here, the Cowper's gland fluid will pass through the urethra and come out first. And a few seconds later, the ejaculatory ducts contract and seminal fluid with prostatic fluid will then come out of the penis later. So ejaculation two phases mein hota hai. Pehle phase mein kya pass out hota hai? Cowper's gland fluid. And second phase what passes out? The semen with sperm in it. Why does this Cowper's gland fluid pass out first? So, why does sticky watery fluid come out first and then the viscous semen come out? Sperm, if you remember, have already become motile. They have now have motility and do we remember, seminal fluid will provide it with fructose and using fructose, sperms are now vigorously moving. They are moving vigorously but they still have to pass through the urethra and the urethra is a long tube so sperm by their own tail movement if they keep on passing through the urethra they will hit the walls of the urethra they will collide with the walls of the urethra and that means the sperms will die even before they have been ejaculated out so you have to protect the sperm from their own self-destruction by hitting the walls of urethra. How to prevent that? As soon as sperm enter into the urethra, do we remember that Cowper's gland fluid is sticky, transparent, mucus-like. It is mucus jessa, so it will lubricate the walls of the urethra 
at the mouth first. And as it lubricates the urethra, now even a sperm come in contact with it, Cowper's gland fluid acts as a beautiful lubricant. It will not allow sperms to have friction and sperms will glide, go to the other side, slide and by nice gliding, sliding movement, the sperms will come out without any destruction because of Cowper's gland fluid. So, those are your three glands, namely seminal vesicles, prostate gland and Cowper's gland. We just take a small break here. I'll be back with you for the last part.